Hey guys, Jamie at the Summer Marine Channel. Welcome back. So today we're going to make a do-it-yourself whipped body butter. The thing that I love about the whipped body butter is A, it feels amazing on your skin, especially in fall and winter. I don't even make it in the summer, only in fall and winter. And the second thing that I love is it is suitable for a beginner. So if you've never made your own skincare before and you're thinking about diving in, this is really the perfect spot to get started. I did put a full recipe down in the description box below. I also put a link to my blog where I go a little bit more in depth about all the ingredients, why I use them, all of that jazz. I do want to go over a little bit of the troubleshooting and just some information before we dive in and make our whipped body butter. So the first thing that I want to go over is that this is a body butter and it is very different from a lotion. So before you make it, I want you to know that it's made with all butters and oils. So it's not like a lotion that's going to absorb completely in and leave you with no greasiness left behind. It's intended to have a little bit of greasiness because we really want all of those oils and butters on our skin and really getting the most out of them. With that, we do everything that we can to kind of mitigate some of the greasiness. So we're not trying to walk around and be all super greasy. It's just, we want a really good hydration, but we want to mitigate as much as that as we can. And throughout the video, I will explain the different stuff that I do to make this body butter not be super greasy, right? Cause we don't want to be super greasy. That'd be weird and gross. Um, another thing that I'm asked a lot is when is it the best time to use your body butter? Typically you want to use your body butter right after you get out of the shower. And the reason why I recommend that you do that is when you get out of the shower after you've dried off, there's still a little bit of water on your skin. Because this does not contain any water, you wanna go ahead and have that water when you put it on, and it's gonna seal it in and give your skin the moisture and hydration that it needs. Um, just a warning, <laughs> this is completely butters and oils, so I have kind of a funny story. When I first started out making my own skincare, um, my late mom would test it with me. So every time I made something, she would come over, she would pick it up, she would test it, she would give me her thoughts, ideas, you know, how everything felt, her opinion on the stuff. So the first time that I make with body butter, I make it and I send it with her. She leaves it in her car all day. And <laughs> And then she gets home and she calls me and she's like, it melted. The body butter melted. I mean, you can still use it. It still feels good. And that was how we kind of found out that really body butters need to be kept in a cool location. So in the middle of summer, you ain't going to be leaving these in your car. If you do on accident, you definitely can just whip it back up. It will go back into shape. But when you open it, you're going to be like, what did I do? Because there's nothing in here that's not a natural butter. At a certain temperature, it is going to melt on you. Another thing that I'm asked all the time is, does this need a preservative? It does not. Since we're only using oils, it does not require any type of preservative. Another question that I'm asked all the time is about the shelf life of the whipped body butter. So to figure that out, what we're gonna do is look at the butters and oils that we use. We have cocoa butter, shea butter, and grapeseed oil. Of those three, grapeseed oil has the shortest shelf life, which is roughly around 18 months. So let's assume we got all of our butters today and we opened them today. This would last probably about 18 months. That's a pretty good estimation. Now, if you got your shea butter eight months ago, this would only be good for 10 months. So you want to go by the ingredient with the shortest remaining shelf life left. And that's roughly where you can kind of figure it out. I don't think I've ever kept a body butter that long because I use them right up. But if you're worried about it, kind of look at when you got the ingredients, when you opened them and what their beginning shelf life was. And you can kind of get a pretty good guess. One way to extend the shelf life is to go ahead and add a bit of vitamin E in here. That is not a preservative. So what vitamin E does is it actually slows down the process in which the oils go rancid. It's not a preservative, but it helps keep your oils better longer. Without further ado, let's dive in and actually make our whipped body butter. I think you're really gonna enjoy making it and it's such a simple and forgiving recipe. If you mess up at any point, you can reheat stuff, put it in the freezer and whip it again. So don't be worried about um, messing it up at all. Oh, I did wanna tell you one thing. If you are brand new to making your stuff, and if this is the first time that you're making it, start out with a small amount. Like the, <laughs> the first time that I started making it, I didn't make like eight ounces. I'm like, I'm gonna make this industrial size container of whipped body butter, and I strongly recommend not doing that. Start out with like four, 
eight ounces, something like that, like a very small amount, then that way you can see how it feels and then you can play with it a little bit more because you're gonna wanna try a different scent, you're gonna wanna add a different color. There's so many different things that you're gonna wanna do and if you make like 50 containers of this, you're not gonna be able to use it quick enough to try different things. So I strongly recommend when you're first making stuff, just make like one container at a time. That way, A, if it gets messed up, you can easily make another batch. B, you get to experiment a little bit more and get all kinds of practice. Now let's hop in and actually make our whipped body butter. Now it is very important that when you are making your products that you are actually weighing them on a scale and not using cups and things like that because trust me, it's not gonna give you a very consistent and good recipe. So I just have this little digital scale and I'll place my bowl on there push the tear button. So what that does is while well, my container's on there, and I don't know if you can see this or not, but the scale is going to read all zeros. And then I can go ahead and start putting my ingredients in there until I get to the amount that I need. And these scales aren't super expensive, but if you plan on making your own body care stuff, it's probably one of the most, actually it is the most used thing that I use because I use this literally for every recipe. So just go ahead and make sure that you're weighing everything on a scale and not by cups or anything like that. So these are ingredients for our whipped body butter. The first one is gonna be shea butter, which is one of my favorite emollients. It's known for its soothing and softening properties. Now, unpopular opinion, but personally, I do not love the smell of the unrefined shea butter. It's just a little bit too earthy for me, so I typically get the refined. You can use either one. I just feel like that earthiness tends to carry through into the finished product, and I don't really love it, but that's just my opinion. So you can really use either one in this recipe. The next one that we're gonna use is cocoa butter. Now, you will notice the difference between the two. So cocoa butter is a very brittle butter compared to shea butter, which is a very soft butter. Both of these melt right around your skin temperature. Cocoa butter is a little bit of a higher melting point than the shea butter though. So the good thing about cocoa butter is it is filled with fatty acids that help to thicken up our whipped body butter without making it stiff. So it's gonna go ahead and make it a little bit harder, but not like a stiff texture. And the next thing that we're gonna use is grapeseed oil. So grapeseed oil is a dry oil, which I know sounds weird, but a dry oil is one that when you put it on your skin, it's gonna absorb in right away and it's not gonna leave any of a greasy feeling on your skin. So unlike if you're using olive oil or something like that, grapeseed oil is a dry oil, so it's gonna help curb some of the greasiness from these other butters that we're using. In the next ingredient that we use is arrowroot powder. So arrowroot powder has a mattifying and degreasing effect on our skin and adding it to our whipped body butter is gonna go ahead and cut down on some of the greasiness that's in this body butter. And by nature, body butters are gonna be a little bit greasy, right? We're using 100% oils, but by using other things like a dry oil and a little bit of arrowroot powder, we can really cut down on the greasiness to make it more manageable. And then for our fragrance oil, I am using white tea and pear, which smells like maybe a sweet tea with bergamot, and then just a little bit of like pear and apple. I'm absolutely in love with the smell right now. You can certainly swap this out for any fragrance oil that you would like to use. Just make sure that if you swap it out, you check the use rate on your fragrance oil because it really does vary depending on the fragrance oil that you're using. Now, I'm not using very much, so you could probably with most fragrance oil, you're gonna be able to get away with just doing a straight swap. So what we're gonna do now is go ahead and grab a heat safe container. I like to use these little glass bowls, but any heat safe container is gonna go ahead and work. We're gonna add our cocoa butter and we're gonna add our grapeseed oil. So we need to go ahead and put this on a double boiler. For me, what I use is, I just go ahead and use a regular pan and then I have this silicone mat that I just pop in the bottom. The reason why I put the mat on the bottom and it doesn't fit perfectly and that's fine, I just put it in here because I'm always worried that the glass is somehow gonna break. So by having the mat on the bottom, it reduces the chances of this breaking. And I've never actually had one of these break when I was doing this. It's just a fear that I have. So I'm gonna add just a bit of water here so as you can tell, there's a little bit of water in there. There's not a huge amount. And I'm just gonna go ahead and place 
our stuff right in the center of this and then we'll head over to the stove and melt this. And what we're going to do is go ahead and pop this on the stove and we're going to put this on a low to medium heat until our butters are melted. So I'm trying to get you at some kind of angle so you can see what's going on in the double boiler. But basically, I think you can see pretty well right there. What we're going to do is we're just going to allow this on like a low or medium heat melt slowly. So we never want to burn our oils and our butters. That's why we don't cook them directly on a fry -in pan. We want to heat them up over a low heat. Now because cocoa butter has such a low melting point, it really doesn't take that long for this to melt. And it's not something that necessarily you have to sit here and stir the whole time, but you do want to make sure that you're stirring it as you're going just to make sure that all of the oils and the cocoa butter is melting at the same time. So I'll normally come, I'll give it a quick stir, then I'll leave for a few minutes, come back. You could certainly sit here. Um, if I would have broke this into smaller pieces, it would actually melt obviously a little bit quicker than what it's gonna do because it's in this big chunk. Now, one thing to keep in mind is when you're doing this, you don't wanna add too much water to the bottom, right? We don't want this to boil over and get any water in with our oils. So I just put a wee little bit of water on the bottom. So never put too much because when you get some boiling, you don't wanna risk the water getting in there because then you would have to preserve it and oil and water don't mix, so it would be a whole thing. And it looks like it's just about melted here, another few seconds. I'm just waiting for that last, I don't know if you can see it, there's just a wee little piece of cocoa butter here that's not melted. Okay, so that is fully melted. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the stove off. Now, one thing that I always do is when I remove this from the water, I go ahead, I take a towel, and I'm gonna dry off the sides of my bowl. Again, because we don't wanna get any water into this, you wanna make sure that you just grab a washcloth or a towel and dry, dry it off. And now I'll head over to the counter and we will finish. Well, these are still hot, what we're gonna do is go ahead and add our shea butter. And we're gonna go ahead and mix this until the shea butter is fully melted. Now, you might be wondering why we wouldn't have added the shea butter to the double boiler, which you certainly can do. But the reason that I don't is shea butter is very temperamental so you want to heat it but you don't want it getting too hot and then when you cool shea butter you need to cool it quickly so in an effort not to overheat the shea butter i just go ahead it has such a low melting point it's fairly easy just to mix it around and get it to melt in here so that's why i do it like this um, if for some reason it didn't melt all the way what I would do is I would just hop over to the double boiler and I would set this in that warm water. I wouldn't even turn the double boiler back on. So I would just set it in there for a minute or two if I had to. So I'm just gonna keep stirring this until it is all the way melted. Now the shea butter is not wanting to melt all the way, which is fine. So what I'm doing is I just took our heated water that we had on the double boiler, brought it over to the counter, and I'm just gonna set this in here and keep mixing until the shea butter fully melts. Like I said, sometimes you're able to do it without the added heat, sometimes you can. It really depends, you know, what temperature it is. Now, the reason why I'm so worried about overheating the shea butter is shea butter has to cool rapidly and if it doesn't cool down quick enough what happens is your body butter is going to have like a grainy texture so i've found that by heating shea butter really to the bare minimum so only as much as we have to and then we pop it in the fridge or the freezer to cool you don't wind up with that graininess if for some reason you were to find that your body butter does get the grainy consistency 
what you would want to do is actually reheat the entire batch and then you would cool it down quicker. So take a container, put ice in it, put a little bit of water and just mix it exactly how I'm doing now. But instead of hot water, it'd be the cold water. And then that way you don't have the graininess. You can certainly swap the shea butter out um, if you wanted to. If you were worried about that, I've never had like a super issue with it. I just really love shea butter in this whipped body butter, so I don't want to switch out that ingredient. And it looks like it is fully melted. So I'm gonna pull it out of here, and the same thing. We're gonna go ahead and dry the outside of the container. So to our oils, we're gonna go ahead and add the arrowroot powder. And we'll go ahead and give that a really good mix. And it's not gonna take very long to get this all mixed in. Now I kind of just grab the little bits and like smush them to the side to help them get mixed in. Now what I'm going to do, it would be completely fine to pop this into the fridge or freezer because it's really just slightly over room temperature. But because we're going to be whipping it, and I like to use a container like this, I'm pretty sure that whipping it in here would cause one heck of a mess. I'm going to go ahead and just put it in this other container. And by no means do you need one with this pouring spout on it. I just use it because, honestly, this is my favorite mixing container. It's nice and deep. I can get the whipping thing in there, um, and it doesn't cause a big old mess. So that's why I like to use this container. Now, I'm going to pop this in the freezer for a few minutes. You can either put it in the fridge or the freezer completely up to you, and then I'll come back and I'll show you through the process what we're looking for with our whipped body butter. So I went ahead, pulled this out of the freezer. As you can see, it's kind of solid on the sides, but in the middle, there's just a thin layer over the oils that are not all the way cooled. So I'm just gonna kind of scrape all of this off the edge as best I can. Sometimes it's hard with these silicone spatulas. So, wow. So you might want to come in with like a wooden spoon and it just makes it a little bit easier if it's too stuck to the sides. And I'm going to take my electric whisk. So you actually are going to have to have an electric whisk. It's not something that you could do by hand. Um, and I'm not sure that a hand mixer would give you the right consistency that we're going for. And after I whip it up, I like to come back in and make sure that I have none still stuck to the sides here. As you, I don't know if you can see in there, I had a little bit that was still stuck. So just make sure you're really scraping because see right there, I have some that's not all the way mixed in. And I'm just going to go ahead and hit it again. Now this is whipping up nicely. But as you can see, it's still awfully warm, so it's not really holding its shape very well. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop this back into the freezer just for a few minutes. I want it to be a little bit more cooled down so we're gonna get a better whipping out of it, if that makes sense. And I just pulled this out of the freezer again. It is quite a bit harder. So I'm gonna come in with my wooden spoon 
and just break it off the edges a little bit. I left it in there a little bit more than I planned on it, but it's fine. Oftentimes the hardest part is getting the little bits that stick like to the inside corner of your container off of there and whipped in. Oh, there we go. It's starting to come loose. What I'm going to do now is go ahead add the fragrance oil and I'm going to and we'll go ahead and whisk that all in at the same time. Now I'm not actually going to add any color to this, but if you wanted to, this would be the point where you go ahead and add your makeup powder into your whipped body butter. By the way, this smells amazing right now. And what we're gonna do is just go ahead and put this in our storage container now I've seen people pipe it in there. Um, I don't do that because I feel like it's probably gonna lose its shape, but if you want to, you certainly can pipe it into your container. But I'm just gonna go ahead and scoop it all in there. And there is your finished whipped body butter. I really hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoy making and using your whipped body butter as much as I do. Bye.